Welcome to Daddy's YouTube channel. And have a happy Christmas. <laughs> it's developed with WP. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Develop with WP. As always, my name is Bobby and today we're going to cover how to include JavaScript and CSS files into your WordPress project. In our example, we're going to be we're going ugh, we are going to be including them in a plugin, uh, but you could also do the exact same thing with some slight variations if you were working with a theme. Um, the thing, the, the item that we're going to cover today is something called enqueuing styles and scripts, and, and WordPress has two functions for that: WP enqueue styles and WP enqueue scripts. So we're going to cover those functions and how to use them to properly load up uh, JavaScript and CSS files. Um, we're also going to take it one step further because that's just just my norm, right? It can't just be basic. We're also going to add some conditional statements and look at some uh, unique global variables that we can use to only load our styles and scripts exactly when they're needed and to not load them any other time. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, to set the, the groundwork, I will mention that I have, if you look at my project directory here, you will see a few new things. I went ahead and did this ahead of time. I've created a CSS folder and I've created a JavaScript folder. And if you look in each one of those, I have uh, two files, one called adminjobs.css and one called adminjobs.js. Uh, these files are empty, but I do want to make you aware that I have went ahead and, and tried to save us a little bit of time by creating those. All right, so let's get started. Um, we're going to include these on our main job plugin file. And so let's just go ahead and create a function. And we're going to call it DWWP admin in scripts. Um, and we're going to do our add action. Uh, and the action we're going to use here, so there's a couple of different hooks that you can use. Uh, because these styles are only going to be loaded in the admin, we're going to use a hook called admin in queue scripts. But if you were going to be using this to on the front end, it would be a different hook. All right, so we have that admin and queue scripts. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is define two global variables. Uh, you remember, you may remember that we did something similar to this when we first started this plugin series, and we were messing around with um, changing the um, admin menu. We were adding stuff to the admin menu. Same thing here. All right, and then what I want to do is I actually want to show you what these exist what what exists here so let's do my my good old fashioned bar dump and we'll add in page now all right let's go back to our site um, so i'm on a job edit screen if i hit refresh you'll see that it says post-new.php and so that's the file that's being ran to create a new post if and it's important to know this um, when you're editing when you're creating posts there's this post-new.php when you create a new post and if a post if a post already existed and you were to go to say edit that post then it would just be post.php so it's important to know that depending on whether you're creating a new file or new post or editing a post you'll actually have two different um, files and we're going to account for that here in just a second so you're going to see here in a minute how we're going to use this file type to conditionally load our scripts. The other one that we're using is called type now. And there's a couple of ways to do this. You don't, I mean, uh, I guess I could show you another way here in just a second. If we refresh this and look, you'll see that it, it gives us the post type. So it's returning the, the type now is, you know, what type of post are we on now? It's job. Um, if I were to, uh, actually, if I were to go to posts and go to add new, it would be post and so forth and so on. Okay, so um, so yeah, that's how we're getting the um, that's how we're getting the post type. There's a lot of ways to get the post type. Uh, another common way that you'll probably see that I've used before is where you do something like dollar sign screen. 
uh, equals, and then you'll say uh, get current screen. All right, and if we var dump that screen variable, uh, it's going to give us a bunch of stuff, but one of the things it gives us is the post type. Bar dump, da -da 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 -da. I think I didn't mess that up. Let's check it out. Yeah, so it gives us a whole object. But what you'll see here is that post type exists. So if I wanted to clear this up a little bit, you know, I could say, you know, um, post type, I think. I don't know if it's an underscore or not. Let's find out. Yep, there you go, post. And if I go back over here to add new, it says job. So again, there's a there's a bunch of ways to get to get that. Um, I'm just going to use these variables, and that's how, and, and so now I, I I have them just with these global variables. The next thing I want to do is I want to make my conditional statement. So I'm going to create an if statement that's only going to load certain styles and scripts uh, under certain circumstances. And the way I want to do this is I want to check for two things. I want to check that one we're on a post edit screen, and two that we're on the jobs post type. That's the only time I want these files to open. If you're on a post edit screen and you're on a job post type, then we're going to run these scripts. So let's do our if statement. If, um, and we're going to do another set of parentheses because we're actually going to check because again, I showed you there's two different files, two different edit screens technically. We need to check whether or not either of those exist. So we're going to do a, an or statement first. So page now equals um, post.php um, or page now equals um, post new.php. All right. Um, so that's the first check. We're checking to see is it a post edit screen? And we've at we've given it both options that are available. The next thing we're going to use is the type now font variable, which I showed you has the uh, post type, and we're going to check that the post type equals job. All right. So. Essentially, we're saying if we're on a post edit screen and you're on the job posting or job post type, then you know, enqueue these scripts. So, the first thing we're going to do is enqueue our um, admin styles, and we're going to do this with a thing called wp underscore enqueue style. All right, so let's go look this up in the codex. So NQ style, well, this is NQ script. So NQ style and NQ script are pretty similar. Not sure what I just did there. Okay. All right, so we need a handle. So this is just a unique name. Um, and then I guess it says everything else is optional, but I'm pretty sure you're going to want a source. So here's what we're going to set. We're going to set a unique name for this that, that we can, it just has to be unique. It can be whatever we want it to be. Then we're going to give it the source. So we're going to give it the direct file path to where this file exists. Uh, if it has any dependencies, we're going to set those dependencies. We're going to give it a version, which is just, it could be whatever you want. You'll see here in a minute, I use um, the date and then String specifies the media for which the style sheet has been defined. Um, that's a good question about that one. I don't know that I've used that one. So we're gonna, we're, it's optional anyway, which is probably why I don't know what it is. So we're just gonna skip that one. All right, let's get started. So we need our unique identifier. Again, it could be whatever we want it to be. I'm gonna call this DWP um, admin CSS, because that's what it is. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the direct path to where this file is. Um, and if you remember when we were doing our require once is up here, we did this plugin dir path and that makes sure that we have the exact right file. We're going to do something very similar, except we're going to use one called plugin um, underscore URL and we're going to pass in the path. So this takes us all the way up to our root directory for our plugin. 
So all we need to provide from here is just JS for the JavaScript folder and then, or sorry, CSS for the JavaScript, for the <laughs> CSS folder and then the file name, admin uh, dash jobs.css, which you can see exists here, admin dash jobs slash or dot CSS. All right, so that's our source. We've told it exactly where to go look for it. Um, and then we're gonna leave the rest of the stuff that's optional uh, empty. We don't have any dependencies or anything like that. We're not gonna set a version. Um, if you wanted to set a version, you could actually, that's useful. The version is really useful if you're using something like say Bootstrap, or if you were including, although jQuery is already included in WordPress, if you were including some type of JavaScript framework that exists, that's popular, you know, you would obviously want to tell it exactly what version you want to use. Uh, for our case here, it's not really that important, so we're not going to worry about it. All right. Um, and then we are going to set uh, a script. So WP underscore NQ script. All right, and let's look this one up. It has a lot that it's very similar, but it is, it is slightly different. So this one again is gonna have a handle and a source the same way and dependency, so all that's the same and the version. So everything's the same except the difference here, and I've used this one and we're gonna use it, is it has an in footer option which is set to default. So if you don't include an in footer option, what'll happen is it's gonna put your JavaScript file in the head. Um, what's really cool though, is, and is what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this to true and we're gonna make sure that our JavaScript gets loaded in a footer, in the footer, and that's just a performance type thing. All right, so let's give it our unique handle. This one I'm gonna call um, dwwp-job dash js again it could be whatever we want um, we're going to do the same thing so i'm just going to copy this part this plugin url part and we're going to change this to the javascript file or folder and we're going to change it to the file which is admin jobs dot js okay um, and then the next thing is dependencies. We actually are going to set some dependencies here. So we're going to do an array. And we're going to set a dependency for jQuery. So the beauty of WordPress is that jQuery comes built in. So you don't have to actually ink, you don't have to enqueue jQuery separately. It's already in WordPress. You just have to tell WordPress that your new JavaScript file requires jQuery. Uh, the other thing we're going to set is we're going to set another dependency called jQuery. Uh, dash UI dash date picker, which is also in WordPress. That's going to come in handy later on. You'll see why. Don't worry about it right now. Just know that we're setting it as a dependency. I am going to set a version. I'm just going to set the version to a date. That's generally what I do, especially if it's like my own file. I just set it to a date. And that needs to be a string. And then the last option is the in footer option. I'm going to set it to true. That way our stuff shows up in the footer. All right, so let's go back to our site, refresh, and see if I broke anything, which I did. Plug in URL. I broke plug in URL somehow. Plugins. Plugins, plugins, plugins. Let's see what else I broke. Yep, that looks like that's it. So now what I want to do is I want to uh, do inspect element here. And I want us to look in the head and look for our styles. So if we look in here, we see the dash icons, the Google font, debug bar, and then we see our CSS admin jobs.css, which is awesome. We see jQuery and a bunch of other stuff. And then if we go down to the very bottom to our JavaScript in the footer, you will see that our job listing js admin .jobs .js is in the footer. Um, if I were to remove that part, oops, 
Now we're to go in here and remove this true statement and save it and refresh. And we go to the very top and look in the head. You would see my CSS as well as my JavaScript is now in the head. Um, so obviously, again, I'm going to go back and change it to be true. But I just wanted to show you that that's show you that that little parameter in, in action. Um, we set some dependencies. Um, that's all. That's all we're going to do for this video. I just wanted to show you how to enqueue the styles and scripts. In the next video, we're actually going to um, use these CSS and JavaScript files to make some really cool stuff um, happen on here. All right. So uh, again, thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to put them down in the comments area. I look forward to uh, answering any and all comments. Um, also, you know, we'd really appreciate a thumbs up or a share or a like or, you know, all that good social stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, whatever you feel is warranted, we'd appreciate it. So again, have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.